Hi, I'm Michelle Cooper, and I'd like to invite you to one of my favorite painting spots. This is the Mukilteo Lighthouse Park near Everett in Washington, and I'm going to enjoy this location, do just a little bit of sketching, have a picnic lunch, and then take everything back to the studio for a painting. I brought along my handmade do-it-yourself watercolor sketchbook and then my water brush and my Lamy Safari fountain pen with water-soluble ink and just decided to do a few little rock studies here and then with the portable watercolors I did some figure studies of the two main people that I think I'll do in my composition. Now I'll just enjoy my lunch and then go back to the studio. So my first decision is what format will I use? Vertical or horizontal? I think I will use horizontal for this composition. So I've marked out the corners of my 8x10 format on my 11x10 paper and laid out my paints. And I've got a damp sponge to use for regulating the water on my watercolor brushes. And a piece of 200 pound Saunders Waterford paper, watercolor paper. It's cold press. That's my favorite paper for painting outdoors. Now I've got to do my sketch, figure out where the horizon line's gonna be. I think I'll do it up higher here. And I'm gonna that means most of my painting will be foreground. Lots of foreground, not very much background. Okay, so I'm figuring out where the center is and how I'm gonna place these bluffs just off center. I've got about three areas of background headlands I can do. So the larger one closer, the middle size one in the middle section, and then a longer silhouette here for the distant headline. I've got small, medium, and large. Okay, now I have to figure out where I'm going to put the shoreline here. I want some of it to project over the top of the distant background so I'll just keep drawing it until I get the shape I want and then eliminate the shapes I don't want. This will be the, the rock edge of the seawall. Now let's see. have to figure out how to space out the contours of my shoreline here. Let's see. Nothing too much in the middle, so it just should be off center a little bit. So let's pull this over. And I'll continue working on my sketch. get this little angle here and just two little lines to indicate where my figures are going to be. flat sable watercolor brush and my Fitch, I guess it's called a cat's tongue too, but um, this is a nice angled brush that gives me sharp lines and also some good dry brush effects. 
Now I have sprayed my paints to activate them with a spray bottle. So I got my big water container here and we're gonna get started with some background washes. Pre-wet the sky area just down to the horizon line. That way the paint will stop where the water stops. I want to get that springtime sort of sky look with the cerulean blue towards the bottom here. It's a little cooler blue, kind of turquoisey, and then some cobalt blue for the darker part of the upper part of the sky. I want to also get some angles going to direct us down into the rest of the painting. See if I can leave just a few of those little light clouds up there. Okay, and then down here in the foreground, I'm going to need some of the same colors to create a feeling of uh, perspective. Get that reflected sky happening down here in the water. Wet into wet. Okay, and then just add a little cerulean blue here at the plane change and then start putting in some variations of the sky color. Wet into wet, wet on dry. This is dry part until I until you see it shiny here like where I'm wetting it. I rinse out my brush and lift off a few lighter places here so I can integrate that one really bright looking cloud up there so it doesn't look too isolated. Also continuing some of those diagonal lines. Okay, that's wet right there so we'll see if I can get it thick enough to create that distant headland. Okay, I'm going to add some cobalt blue and some um, burnt sienna and just create kind of like a gray blue for the background. But this is pretty wet and my angle of painting is not very high so I am getting some feedback up there but actually I don't mind that. Maybe get a little bit of this green, kind of a sap green in there, but not too green. I don't want that to be really strongly green. Lift this up just a little bit there. I, I want to keep that from bleeding down into the into the uh, plane change there at the horizon. Okay, back in now. And just finesse this a little bit get the color I'm looking for. Now just working back and forth between the thickness of the paint, the wetness of the paper, dabbing off the brush on the sponge whenever I need to. Okay, next get this middle section here. Now I'm going to start with some kind of a olive looking green here. And that will kind of establish an underlying color for the little bit closer section of my landforms. Blew it off. Just keep you know, variations of um, ultramarine, I mean uh, cobalt blue, uh, sap green, and um, burnt sienna. Adjusting the angle of my brush, how much paint is on there, cooling and warming it up, and just getting a more interesting contour to this landform here compared to the distant background. 
I do want to press this a little bit harder right here to deposit some darker paint right at the plane change between the middle and the foreground part. Well, it's not a foreground, but the closer area of the bluff. Create an accent there and make sure that between the two, this part is darker and the closer part is a little bit lighter. Just lift off some of those unnecessary details. Okay, looking at three distances now. Now let's go for some thick raw sienna here on dry paper. Don't want to paint it as if I was painting a, a wall, but I want to leave some light areas too. But I do like this underpainting of the thicker paint of raw sienna. It creates a denser mixture and makes the uh, makes this area look closer. I think keep that light enough right next to the background there. Add some dark on this edge here for some shadows. There's going to be some big shadows happening on here. Get some dry brush area for the edges of some trees and develop this area to finish most of the background. pretty wet here so can't do much with that so let's make a thick wash of ultramarine I mean uh, yeah ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and use the dry paper create some contours here with sort of the rock shapes the sand you know the, it's not sand it's gravel basically but I get it lighter and lighter as it goes into the distance here. Make some warm passages. Create lighter ones. Try to save some of those white highlights so that's water that sparkles on the tops of those rocks. Continue giving us the near and the far shapes here of this rock wall. There's a railway that goes around this bend and the railroad has uh, loaded all of these rocks here as a seawall to keep the waves from eroding the shoreline. There's not really any sand here. There's just tiny rocks or bigger rocks and really big rocks. So I'm trying to alternate the sizes and the shapes of these shadows, cast shadows, textures between a neutral kind of color back here in the distance and some various different shapes and then warm and cool passages here trying to keep the light at the top if I can until I've got this wall done okay so some of this is wet on wet some of this is wet on dry using a kind of a mid-tone light color here, but modifying some of these edges by turning my brush. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Get a little closer so you can see here. Warm and cool, soft edge, hard edge. Uh, trying to keep the light at the top of most of these rock shapes, rock forms.
Okay, so we've been working on all these vertical planes here, so still more vertical planes. These are the shoreline rocks, and now the ones that are sometimes um, taller, sometimes shorter. Try to vary, vary this um, neutral kind of color here with warm and cool grays, and also change some of these edges. Let's get some darker values. This forms a context for the shoreline. brush here and lift out some of these shapes here just to give that feeling of a misty kind of humid area here. Create some different kind of shapes within the rocks and continue working on that whole section of the rocky landscape. Most of the time here, I'm not paying much attention to the reference anymore. I'm just kind of working through my design. different sizes and shapes. Kind of a pattern of connecting all the foreground rocks. I'm using a little bit of thirsty brush here too to lift out some of the lighter areas. And I'm going to just alternate some of these values. Even take some paint from some of these darker rocks and use it in the more pebbly part of the beach. Soften some edges, create some smaller shapes, variety of light, medium, and dark, dry brush, and actual painted shapes, and connect all of these planes together now of the foreground horizontal plane. Dry brush works really great for this. It gives a texture 
of tiny rocks and pebbles without having to paint each one. I know this is where my figures are going to be, but that's okay. I'm going to paint them over the top of that. Another way to add texture is spatter. We'll block off the areas where you don't want tiny little dots and add a variety of warm and cool spatter. Don't just do all one same color or even one same value. And you can blot off anything that accidentally got spattered. As long as it's, you know, right away, it'll just completely come right off. Now, this background area here is dry enough for me to add some darker shadows, more contrast, to give it the feeling of being closer to you than the middle distance. Get the dark edge right here for sure. Try to make a variety there and continue. <laughs> in the values and the surface of the water here. Just very, very little detail in the background and then work our way up to more shapes, wavelet forms, directional strokes to give the sparkle on the water and the direction for the movement of the water. Sometimes I put a dry brush on and then Wet it gives us just the right shape, too. That's on dry paper right now, but then as soon as you put the paint on, that wets the paper again, too. So we're right in the very light mid-tone shapes and colors right now, and then slightly intensify or else uh, by glazing, by putting another, another um, layer of the same color, you can get these uh, subtle kind of wave movement happening again. I'm trying to keep as much white space as I need to give the finally breaking wave at the edge of the shoreline there too. There wasn't a lot of wind this day, but sometimes it creates little white caps. And when the big container ship went by, um, it also created a wake and that made some waves splash up on the shoreline rocks right around in here. Trying to keep the, as much white space as I can because once it's gone, it's gone. Okay, once again, we need more contrast as we get closer. By mixing up a darker version of our similar same gray that we had before, or bluish gray kind of, for some of the darker shapes in the most foreground water here. I can change into some rocks too, but it's the same. You know, cobalt blue and burnt sienna, or else ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Either way would work fine. And I'm just trying to get a higher contrast and a slightly deeper color in these next strokes here. Being careful about the edges though, because I have to figure out where I'm gonna leave rocks, tops of rocks and where the um, little white caps come back up here onto the sides of the rock.
as we close in closer and closer I'm going to add some more colorful marks here to indicate the higher chroma of the reflection of the sky into the water here. Okay, so let's let all of these wet passages uh, dry while I mix up some colors for the figures. The area where the figures go is really quite dry. I haven't been painting on that for a long time. I'm going to add, um, let's see, right here, there's one figure I'm using some raw sienna with whatever was left over in that brush load there. And then a higher chroma here, this uh, orange, reddish orange here color. Cadmium orange would be fine, or cadmium yellow deep. Any kind of orange color is fine for this. I want to do complementary colors on the uh, two upper body parts, and then we'll just use the standard ultramarine blue for their jeans, their legs. I want the legs to get narrower at the bottom, and let these colors kind of blend in together. Now for some of the beach color to create a cast shadow, something for that figure to stand on. And then the next one, I said I was going to do complementary colors here, so it's turquoise blue sort of color. That's the cerulean blue or manganese blue. Complements the orange of her companion there. And again, French ultramarine blue, pretty dark. Add that for the legs, and the jeans, and let them blend together. Add a little dark there. All right, let's let those dry for a second, and we'll put in some of the darker shadow shapes on these rock shapes. Mix up a darker version of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And then just uh, leave some light tops and mid-tone sides and then some shadows on part of these rocks here. This is a, a good brush to use because you can turn it sideways for lines and then you can press down for oval shapes. You can create dry brush with it. There's a lot of things you can do with a brush like this. It's kind of a stiff tuft on it as well, so you've got quite a bit of control. And now just see if I can put some washes along here to direct your attention more over toward the figures now. Graphic marks here, showing some contours, showing some shadows on the rocks, some of the edges where the water splashes up, and some of the ripples, and other water movement along here. dark rock here too. Right about there. Create a different sort of arrangement. It needs to be kind of a medium-sized rock. 
and then some smaller ones a variety of different shapes here to create a little bit more interest lift off a lighter area another way to get a lighter area is your credit card or your membership card you can, while it's still wet press really hard and squeegee down the tops of the rocks or maybe re-wet an area that you feel like is too solid and scrape off a little bit extra highlights here and there. Usually scrape off the tops and then it'll bring some of that darker paint down farther and create more of a an edge between the horizontal edge and the vertical edge of each of the rocks. You can also do like uh, water ripples coming down off of the wet splashes as well. This is too much contrast here. I'll just add a little bit of color together to hold those together as a big shape. Okay, let's get a little burnt sienna, a little raw sienna maybe, and paint the heads and the hands on these figures. They're dry enough now, I think. So, burnt sienna for the head and neck. This one's looking down more, so now we add a little bit of ultramarine blue to that, and that makes kind of a black color for the hat here. And a little more of this ultramarine blue here. Dry enough? Yeah, I hope. Let's see. Put another hat on. This one now, a little more of a shadow here in this neck area there, and let's see if I can get that hat shape better. Right here, I might have to use some gouache in a minute, just to, if I need to change some shapes. Let's get in a little closer here. See, it's so funny how with watercolor. You think you've got a dark on there, and then the, as the paint dries, it turns out much lighter. So I'm going to need some darker accents here for the things they're carrying that they picked up on the beach and their hats. Let's see. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe a little darker shadow on the face and the neck here. Burnt sienna there. I don't think it's going to show that much on this one. But when it gets dry, it'll dry up just a little bit lighter. Maybe I can make this look like she... She's draped her jacket over her shoulder here. I do think I need some white. This is a white gouache. I'm gonna, I don't like the way that it looks like she's wearing a hoodie. So I'm gonna put a little quick little dash here and there for the negative spaces. Change that shape of that shoulder and maybe along the top of the arm here and change this shape a little bit to get a better head shape I think. Darker shadow here also show a waistline on this one. Okay a little more texture and kind of some negative space behind these figures and in front of these figures you can think of some texture on the beach Good. Okay, now let's see how this looks overall. Some of those uh, bright whites from the gouache are gonna kind of soften off just a little bit. Yep, I like it. As usual, I've composed the entire whole page, <laughs> 10, 11 inches by 10 inches, 
even though I had marked my corners up here for an 8x10. So let's take this 8x10 mat and crop it in and see what the composition would look like if we put it this way. And while I'm thinking of it, I'll sign it at least up into this area. So depending on where I frame it, it'll fit. Let's see what happens if I push this up a little bit because I lost that little white cloud up there. Well, I, I like it this way too. Hmm. I can move this left or right to reveal more of the rocks and also change the position of the um, figures as well. Just a little bit more over here. Or this way. Hmm, what do you think? Original full page or the cropped one? Let me know in the comments below. If it's cropped, did you like it cropped lower or higher to show the clouds and the tops of the trees? Thanks for watching. See you next time.